Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, August 7th, 2016, in the Atlantic Basin this afternoon. Interesting area of cloudiness, showers and thunderstorms north of Hispaniola. We have our area of disturbed weather with very heavy rain tucked away in the northeast Gulf of Mexico and pretty much nothing out here in the main development region. Interestingly enough, despite the appearance of this system as being interesting, I guess is the best way to put it, I don't think it's going to develop. None of the computer models are really bullish on this developing further and it'll probably just kind of go away out here. <laughs> I mean, the tropical wave energy is just going to get absorbed into the rest of the flow into the Atlantic. I don't see much reason to think that this will do anything more than it's doing now. It's a fairly vigorous little system, but the overall state of the atmosphere is just not supportive of development. There's not very much in the way of wind shear, but it's just a pattern of suppressed uh, air in the upper levels, basically a sinking motion, uh, the negative phase of the MJO really, and that's not going to allow this to really do anything. You can clearly see here though we have a surface low rotating near Jacksonville, Florida, but again something just seems to be missing in the overall pattern that are, is not allowing either of these systems to develop further than they are now. But this is definitely bringing a lot of rainfall to parts of the Florida Peninsula. Fortunately along the I-10 corridor here in the Panhandle not much of an issue but boy over here on the western and northwest side of the peninsula some rain amounts between 10 and 15 inches already. Looking at the National Hurricane Center map in the eastern Pacific here it is we do have Tropical Storm Javier and it is headed up towards the Baja Peninsula over the next several days I'll show you what that looks like on their track map. Tropical Storm uh, warnings, watches, sorry, Tropical Storm Watch Gotta remember yellow would be a watch, red is a warning, um, or in this case blue. Uh, interesting that there's tropical storm warnings still along the coast of Mexico here as this pulls away, but the main threat will be heavy rainfall, eh, some gusty wind, winds, but really the intensity guidance down from where it is now even, you know, maybe a slight increase, but overall the envelope is down. Uh, of guidance there. Uh, so for folks in the southwest U.S. as well as northwest Mexico here and along the Baja of course uh, this will be headed in a northwesterly direction and will spread a lot of moisture up into the U.S. southwest especially here in Arizona. So sometime by midweek next week we should see a marked increase in moisture so the monsoon flow uh, chasers, whatever, you know, people that, those awesome photographs you see out of the southwest, that's going to be coming back uh, next week. And certainly the potential for some damaging flash floods as well, so pay attention to that if you live in the area or are visiting the area. And again, it's not really going to do much more intensity-wise. The slope is down from here. Uh, looking back at the Atlantic Basin, I want to point out a couple of things. This is the vorticity signature for the system north of the Greater Antilles here. And there's just a little bit, but not much. So there's not much energy there, first of all. It just doesn't have much to start with. Uh, and then the system here over Florida, very nice and round-shaped, vigorous vorticity signature. But with it being over land, it's just not going to have a chance to develop. There's just nothing... Uh, really going in its favor except the warm water either side of Florida but with it being stuck over land for the most part uh, it doesn't look like it'll have a chance to develop into anything that would boost the wind speeds up and lower the air pressure but again all that heavy rain I guarantee you that's a problem for some of the folks down there in Florida and it just goes to show once again you don't have to have a named storm or even a depression to have some rather depressing weather and have a high impact on you locally if you happen to be in that area. I wanted to point out that the Saharan air layer not nearly as dominant out here, or at least as strong, but the pressures are definitely rising out in the eastern Atlantic, the European model showing higher pressures over the next week to 10 days, and so it's going to be a very quiet period coming up 
in the tropics. And you can even see over Africa very little in the way of convective activity or showers and thunderstorms, fancy way of calling them. That's what convection is, is showers and thunderstorms, mainly the thunderstorms, obviously. And there's a lack of that convection over Africa right now. The Madden-Julian oscillation, that upward motion pulse, uh, really around the western Pacific right now, and they're going to have several storms and typhoons form. The eastern Pacific is staying busy, and until and unless all of that changes, this is what the Atlantic Basin is going to look like. We're not going to have much activity. Uh, you usually don't have the entire globe active all at once. One region will be active, while the other region won't be. And for now, it's still going to be very quiet in the Atlantic. Now, I will say, for those who are saying, you know, Mark, it's getting on into August, and we're really not seeing anything, and the models aren't showing anything out into the future, <clears throat> be that as it may, I would still point out that climatologically speaking, we're not quite on that big ramp up, statistically speaking, for activity to begin. It really starts to go after August 15th through the 20th, and there until really the end of October. And you think about it, it doesn't sound like a lot of time in there for stuff to happen, but there have been seasons where we have seen an entire hurricane season's worth of activity crammed into September and parts of October. 2002 comes to mind, that was an El Nino year, a weak El Nino, and we are not in an El Nino year this year. So, you know, don't let this lull you into thinking that, well, looks like they're wrong, no hurricanes this year threatening the United States. Uh, the end of August and all of September can be very volatile, so just keep that in mind. You know, it's not like I have a crystal ball and I know anything for sure, but climatology is definitely a guide, and when you know what is you know, coming climatologically speaking, that can help you to at least understand what to expect down the road. So enjoy the quiet while it's here. I'm going to be traveling for a couple of days, uh, so no updates tomorrow or Tuesday. I'm not going to take any of my laptop or anything like that with me. I'll certainly keep an eye on things, but I don't think anything's going to pop up out of the blue. This is a good time to travel for a couple of days. If I'm going to do it in August, I might as well do it tomorrow and Tuesday. So I'll be back on Wednesday. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Again, I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again next Wednesday.